I need a CT scan stat room one. Is he gonna be all right? It's too soon to tell. Hey, leave me alone, man. I'm a traitor. He's probably using his neighbor's door for a punching bag. He's hallucinating, probably high on PCP. Put on the cuffs for his own safety. Hey, me and the champ, we're gonna do a few rounds. Yes, yeah, sure. Where is she, Romano? You said Dr. Rhodes would meet us here. Relax, honey. Just try and relax. She'll be here. Well, call her again, please. I'm in pain, Romano. I need my doctor. I'll be right there. There's Danny. What happened? Scott's been hurt. We were riding bikes together after school with Jerry and Debbie. We turned the corner. There was this truck backing up. Scott never even saw it. What about you? Are you all right? I'm fine. Nothing happened to any of us except Scott. Okay, get him prepped for his surgery. Let me know as soon as his parents arrive. I'm Bonnie Myers. His Mrs. Mother. Myers, uh, we can't lose any time now. What's happened? It's an injury to his brain. Uh, chances are we can treat it completely if we operate right now. I don't know if I can reach my husband. He's out of town. No, we I... can't wait for that. I'm the chief of neurosurgery here. My opinion is shared by the head of our trauma center staff. We need your consent, Mrs. Myers. Right now? Oh, look, we did a CT scan. We found a subdural hematoma. We found a great deal of intracranial bleeding. Will you please help me understand that? The bleeding is causing pressure on your son's brain. If it's not stopped, it'll cause brain damage. You're sure? It's my opinion. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Hampton, uh, Gerald Hampton. Dr. Hampton, I'm sure that you've had experience in many cases like this. It's all too common in biking accidents. Your son was lucky, Mrs. Myers. Whoever found him knew enough to get him to the hospital fast. You, Danny? Your friend owes you one. No, Mrs. Myers. Good. Good. The nurse has the forms. There's a waiting room right at the end of the corridor. Take it easy, Pete. Take it easy. I'm Dr. Leon, officer. See what we have here. You'll have to undo the cuffs. We'll need x-rays of his wrist. This guy's acting pretty weird, Doc. You sure? Absolutely. I can't get a picture of his wrist through this hardware. X-rays don't work through metal. Can't delay the surgery. There's no way this boy will make it. Code red in emergency G6. Repeat. Code red in
7 engine 45 helicopter 6. Respond to an alarm at Bayside Hospital, 497 Ocean Boulevard. That's 497 Ocean Boulevard. Your time is 1537 OCD clear. Excuse me, how did the alarm go off? Well, the police brought in a teenager on drugs, and he went absolutely berserk. So uh, he got away from the officers, and he pulled an alarm. Where's that young man now? Does the police need any help? No, they chased him down to a storage area, and they called for a backup unit, so I think they've got everything under control. <laughs> Hey, Debbie? I'm fine, Mrs. Rorchek, but I hate hospitals. They remind me of when I broke my arm. You know, we're going to need someone else for Wednesday. Hmm. Another shortstop for the game. Are you kidding? You're worried about a softball game? Hey, don't get on my case. I was just thinking. I don't understand you talking about a softball game. Don't you care about Scott? Come on, come on. I think we could all use a cold drink. 
I think I saw a vending machine down the hall. You kids want anything? No, thanks, Mrs. Rorschach. Me neither. How about you, Bonnie? I'll just have some coffee. Dr. Korea to OR. Dr. Korea to OR. Ease up on Jerry, Danny. He's as worried about Scott as you are. Sure doesn't show it. Well, he shows it in his own way. Everybody reacts to stress differently. Scott's mother wants to be alone. And Jerry bottles it up inside and then and talks about other things. Maybe. Doesn't seem like right. What about you, old kid? Want to talk? It just seems like I'm having a dream. A nightmare. I know. What are you two doing here? Is anything wrong? No, no, it's Danny's friend, Scott Myers. Danny called me at class and I picked up Bonnie. What happened? Well, we were riding our bikes and Scott got hit by a truck. Well, what's his condition? Well, he's in surgery. They couldn't wait. What kind of injury does he have? It's his head, in the back. The doctor says it's causing some kind of pressure. Dr. Hampton also said if it weren't for Danny's fast action, Scott wouldn't have made it this far. Way to go, partner. I sure hope your buddy's gonna be okay. Sure hope so. Dr. Sherman, 247. Yeah, I see you. Dr. Sherman, 247. Well, look, the fire department's still here. Uh, I'll talk to him right away, okay? I thought they canceled the fire alarm. Well, they did, but it turned out to be a false alarm, so we're heading back to the station. Oh, please don't leave. Uh, look, the police just called the hospital security, and they said that teenage kid has now barricaded himself in a storage room, and he's threatening to blow it up. With what? Well, evidently an orderly left some oxygen tanks in there during the fire alarm, and the kid is letting the oxygen escape. If he starts a fire in that oxygen-rich atmosphere, we could have a flash just like that, or an explosion. I know that. Uh, I'll tell my staff. Tell them we may have some big smoke problems. We have a procedure that covers that. Ted and uh, stuff. I want you to close the fire doors, isolate this area, and get two charged lines down in the hallway. We're on the way, Chief. And Martelli, I want the pump of one at the entrance on the east side. Jack. Haley, you're going to be in charge of evacuation if there is any. We have a special unit on the way to get him under control. Once we have him, you can do what you want. Officer. Is there any luck getting into that storage room? No dice, Chief. As soon as Morton sees that door open, he's liable to carry out his threat. We can't risk it. Chief Barchak, I've got to get into that lab. It's urgent. What's the problem? It's viral influenza. Highly contagious serum samples have been left open in that lab. The lab down here? Yes. But the kid has blocked that door somehow, Chief. We tried the key. But there is a door, a connecting door from the storage room to the lab. Now, that's no good either. The kid's in our way. <laughs> hey! Hey, what's going on out there? Hey, what's going on out there? Just relax, Eddie. Can we talk about it? All right, I got nothing to talk about, man. You just stay out of there. Task Force 27, 
Get lines on the floors above the fire to check for vertical spread, please. Uh, now, exactly what kind of a problem are we talking about? What's this about germ contamination? Well, it's a new strain of influenza that they have just isolated, and it's got the health department and the Center for Disease Control really worried. If it's been released, the smoke from this fire could spread it through the hospital. The heat creates quite an updraft. Yes, but that would be disastrous. I mean, this virus spreads from one host to another in a matter of hours, and I mean, in, in every way, through the air, through touch, through objects. What age group is most vulnerable? Well, for the elderly, or as a matter of fact, through, for anybody of, of any age who's sick and, and weakened, it's about 60% fatal. Well, even if our firefighters have already been exposed, we've got to stay in there until this fire is contained. We can't lose the hospital. Are the contaminated vials clearly marked? Oh, yes. But you can't just go in there and get them. You see, since the explosion, anyone who goes in to destroy those vials really has to be protected. Anybody who comes in direct contact with them becomes an instant carrier. I may have a solution for that. OCD from Battalion 6, dispatch mobile lab to Bayside Hospital. Mobile lab is involved in the North Valley. Their ETA to your position is a minimum, one hour. Now that's too long. I need anti-chemical protective suits right now. I'm sending in helicopter six to pick them up. This guy's been burned pretty bad. Helicopter six from battalion six. I'm dispatching you to the mobile lab to pick up the chemical suits. Get them here as quickly as you can. Contact OCD for the location of Mobile Lab. Roger, I'm on my way. More suction. I can't find the hematoma. It's a real fire this time, Doctor. They're evacuating the East Wing and they want us to move out. And right now... Oh, the boy's life is hanging by a thread. We can't just roll him through the hospital. But the fire could... No, look, we're gonna stay here till the last possible moment. Is everybody out? I don't think I saw Teresa Marquez. She's in 2137. Which way is that? That's the last door on the left. There's a fire downstairs. I am not losing my baby. I want Dr. Rhodes. Please. What is the day? Teresa, we've got to go. What is the day? Mr. and Mrs. Marchese? No. You're going to have to leave. You're evacuating this floor. I'm not going anywhere. She's having another contraction. Where's the doctor? I, I don't know. She's not here yet. You've got to understand, this baby, it's... We can't lose this one. Have you lost one before? Two. Listen, Mr. Marquez, I'm sorry, we're going to have to leave. It's, it's not safe to be here, the one's in danger. Okay, okay. Now, we're just going to move you to another part of the hospital, and the nurses will take good care of you, okay? Oh, sure, sure. Listen, I know what you're going through, but you're going to be all right. We have two more wheelchairs over here, please. Oh. Just follow down to the end of the hallway. Oh. Nurse, give me a hand with this gurney, will you? I'm not leaving. My little boy is in there. Joe says that. I don't care what Joe says. Listen to me, Bonnie. Scott will be all right. They will protect the operating room. But for our own safety, we must follow the fire department orders and evacuate. It'll be okay. They'll have the fire out soon. Danny, you're a fire explorer. You know better than to question fire procedures. My dad can pick us up. He wants to meet us out in front. We better get going. Danny, you're going to call the minute you know anything about Scott. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Danny, the way I was acting earlier, like I didn't care. I know you do care. 
And, uh, no one else plays shortstop except Scott. Got it? Got it. Bonnie, we really have to get out of here. What was that? Oh, my God. I don't know, but we can't waste any more time. We've got to get out with the others. Oh, I just want to be close. I know, I know, and we won't be far away, I promise you. Danny? I'll be right with you. I, I just want to find out how much longer Scott will be in surgery. All right. Oh, Haley, what's going on out there? Does Joe have the fire under control? Well, we're working on it, but there's a new problem now. What is it? Come on, Haley, don't treat me like a baby. Okay, there's a possibility that smoke from the fire is spreading a highly contagious virus. Through the hospital? Well, right now it's in the storage room, but that could change. The warm air and the smoke could cause it to actively spread throughout the whole building. Well, what are you guys doing about it? You gotta stop it. We're doing the best we can. The chief sent for some chemical suits so that we can go in and remove the virus. If it hasn't already been released. Tied up another fire. They can only spare two chemical suits. Good. These suits will keep you protected against biological or chemical contamination, but they're not fireproof. Well, the fire is not in the lab. It's right next door. Oh, do you think you'll be able to keep it under control? Well, hopefully. We'd be in much better shape if the fire had reached the lab and destroyed the virus outright. As it is, we've got to send people in, get them to collect the virus, put it in a container, take the container out, and then destroy it. Well, who are you sending in? Uh, Ted and stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty fresh, Chief. You asking for any volunteers? No, no, no. You stay right by here. We may need you for emergency cases. Thank you. Hey, Captain. Come on, let's go. We, we begin the handbag and respiration. We can't stop now. Come on, what's that emergency power? Okay, it's okay. We're okay. Listen, call a final cause the power failure. I want to know what's going on here. Now, you could break into the lab through the hallway and avoid the storage room completely. Don't snag those suits. Your environment could be completely contaminated. Like walking on eggshells, huh? Exactly. Don't worry, don't you? Now, the hospital says this cylinder is absolutely sterile, and when the top is on tight, it's airtight. Now, the valves go in here. How many? Five. The ones that were being tested. Epiological testing influenza. Response. What about any other vials? No more. Just the ones that were being tested. One other thing. This fire has been knocked down. But be very careful. Those suits are not firing. You got it. Let's go. Uh, good luck. It's the heart case that needs surgery right now. Take him over to Harvard Memorial. All right, but come back quickly. We may need you again.
got them all. Let's go. We got trouble. There's smoke coming out of the air purifiers. No, shut them down quick. They have the fire under control. Why are we getting smoked now? I'll call back. Maybe they can send somebody up no, to Kelton. No, there's no time for that. I need you here. Look, we'll stay here as long as possible. We'll move the boy if it's necessary, but only if it's necessary. Uh, here. Uh, nurse, nurse, over here, quick. How far apart is your contraction? Uh, maybe, uh, uh, 30 seconds. Orderly, get Dr. Leon and bring me a quick impact. Back. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. What's wrong? Am I gonna lose my baby? No, you're ready to give birth. No, please. Why can't you take me to delivery? It's off limits, Teresa. Dr. Leon will be here any minute now. You're gonna be fine. You don't have to be in a delivery room to have a baby. But my doctor, she's not here. Where is she? Try and relax, Teresa. I can't tell you when your doctor's gonna be here, but I can tell you you're gonna give birth any minute. No. <laughs> None of the vials were cracked or broken. That's good. In any case, until we get further confirmation, we'll treat the lab as if it were contaminated. We'll seal it off. Chief, there's smoke in operating room six, and they've reported a power failure. I thought that fire was out. So did I. We better get back there, try to find the source of the smoke. We'll do the same down here. Okay. Fellas, I need a little help. box has been badly burned. Maybe that's why they're getting smoke in the operating room. All right, thank you, Mark. I heard the smoke was coming through a vent in the operating room where Scott is. Why don't they shut the vent? Hey, what are you doing here? I thought I could help. Look, not right now, okay, Danny? They tried to shut the vent, but it was jammed. Well, the only way to stop the smoke is to block this duct. It would take too long, and I don't know how we can do it for certain. Got to try. Of course we do, but the best way to do that is to shut down the fire. Great, then let's do that. Look, we can't until we find the source of the fire. Now, it could be anywhere. We're doing the best we can. That's how it always is. The best we can. Look, you got any better ideas? Hey. I'm sorry, partner. I shouldn't have said that. We opened up a duct in the nurse's lounge, which is about 50 feet from operating room 6, but we can't block the smoke. I want you to check the central air conditioning system on your floor. We've discovered a fire in the electrical system that might have spread there. Can we cut down the main power? Well, we're on auxiliary right now, but we don't know how far the fire is spread in the main wiring. Okay, well, let's roll. Listen, Dan, why don't you go back down to the personnel lounge, okay? But you didn't stop the smoke. We've got to get it at the source. That's the only way.
living up. We're going to have to move them. I'll call administration. We'll find out where they can put us. All right, prepare to attach the portable oxygen to the tracheostomy tube. food? <laughs> You're kidding me. No, no, she went into the hospital to have her gallstones removed and she gained five pounds. <laughs> you hand me candy and talk about weight? A little chocolate on a day like this can't be bad. Yes. Well, I am going to indulge. Cheers. <laughs> oh. Danny around here anywhere. I thought he'd be back by now. Wait right here, Bonnie. I'm gonna go check with Joe. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead, helicopter six. I've returned from Harbor Memorial. I'm available at your location. Roger, stand by because we may have some more patients for you to transport. Chief Rorschach? I have the results of the atmospheric tests. I can tell by your face it's good news. No contamination? Good. According to our air studies, all of the influenza was contained in the basement. Oh, that's a relief. Oh, is it everywhere? And we're not getting any more smoke in the operating room. That's good. Got the last vent closed, so the uh, surgery on the little boy is going just fine. Now, that's good news. But we're holding off on all other surgery, and we're diverting emergencies. Now, how are you making out? Well, we're checking the extent of the electrical fire, and if the fire hasn't spread to any of the other floors, you'll be able to get your patients back. Sounds like things are almost back to normal. Almost, except that you'll be on your auxiliary electrical system until we make repairs. Joe. Uh, hi, sunshine. Uh, darling, this is uh, Mrs. Mitchell, my oh, wife. Hello. How do you do? Very nice to meet nice you. Nice to know you. Would you excuse me? I um, will be in my office if you need me. Have you seen Danny? He's with you. No, all of a sudden he disappeared. I thought maybe he'd come down here. 
I'll just come down. Yeah, let me check. Ted. Ted, is Danny with you? Uh, no, Chief. We left him a while ago. He should be with Mom. Uh-uh. No, he's not. Where was the last place you saw him? Well, he was with us when we were opening up the vent in the nurse's lounge. <sighs> well, listen, as soon as you complete your investigation of the air conditioning plant, go back there and check for him. Right, Chief. We finished that. There was no fire or smoke showing. Right now, we're on our way to check the vent in operating room six. Negative on that. Get back to the nurse's lounge and see if you can locate Danny. Right, Chief. We'll keep you informed. That boy's going to drive me crazy. Danny! Stay put. I'll be right there. Check. Right. <laughs> Got some lungs, my little boy. You have a daughter, a beautiful girl. <laughs> now we're going to take her away for a little while and wash her and treat her eyes. And we'll bring her to your room in a little while. He's got to be somewhere in here. It looks more like a maze than an air conditioning system. Well, it's a straight shot to the operating room. It must be around here. Unless he took a wrong turn somewhere, though. All set. Okay. <laughs> All right, expect to hear from me. Everything's going to look just like everything else in there. I'll talk you through. But get him out of there as quickly as you can. <laughs> Can Danny last in all that smoke? It'll be okay, Mom. Tell me the truth, Chris. What? Look, Mom, there's no sense of getting yourself all upset and then start worrying. Let's just hope that Ted gets to Danny in time, okay? You're a good kid. should be an opening on your left. Repeat, on your left. All right, Chief, I'm backing up. Pick up the slack. Oh, 
wrong time. Oh, uh, he's going to be fine. The doctor's going to examine him, too. Uh, okay, well, I'll take it. Come on. Uh, just a moment. Uh, a few things I want to say to him first. Okay, I'll get the order with Ted, I... It's just my job, man. Don't you give me that. Danny, you forgot everything we tried to teach you. The body system, team effort, command and control system, everything. I know. Well, things turned out all right this time. You were lucky. Danny, I know you meant well, but you weren't thinking. And when you don't think, that can cost lives. I'm sorry. Well, no, that's not good enough. I want you to rethink the situation and decide what would have been a better way to handle it. I'll do that. Then, I want you to prepare a written report on how to think straight in emergencies. A whole report? Yes, a whole report. And then, in order to make the most of this near fatal tragedy, I want you to present that report to every single explorer post in our department. Take him to recover. Just a few weeks. Don't worry, you'll be out playing softball before you know it. Say, when did you get to be a patient here? I was trying to keep the smoke from getting into the operating room. Well, you did. Thanks. You better let Dr. Leon have a look at it on the trauma center. Doctor. Mrs. Myers, your son came through the surgery in excellent shape. Oh. I, I have every expectation will make a complete recovery. Okay. You know, I think the chief is going to be pretty tough on you. Yeah, you're right. But it's worth it. It's a nice, healthy attitude. Face the music and get on with your life. How long do you think they'll let me stay in the hospital? <sighs> Hi, I'm Jack Lindeen with a safety tip from the Los Angeles City Fire Department. Most fires, when detected early, can be easily controlled if you have a fire extinguisher handy and you know how to use it. You might be able to save your home, your car, a recreational vehicle, or even more importantly, a life, if you're prepared. The main types of fire extinguishers are CO2, dry chemical, and water. Check with your neighborhood fire station for the type best suited for your needs. It's a nicer world with you in it. Can an Englishman bring peace to a wild western town? Kenneth Moore and Jane Mansfield star in The Sheriff of Fractured Jaw, next on the USA Movie.